Step 1. Doll Prep Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Could Do That DIY. Today we're doing another custom doll and we're using a Widona spider body and a Frankenstein head that I dyed black with some red dye. Well, kind of black. It's still a little brown, so we're going to end up blushing it later with some black pastels. I end up having to use the graphite red dye, which is not a black, it's actually like a gray. Um, and make sure you use the synthetic red dye or else it won't work for the head. For the hair, I'm using hair from dollyhair.com. It is in the color oyster shell. I ombre it using the same dye that I used for the head. Looks really good. Here it is. I just want to give her a little root interest. I think it'll look really good. So yeah, the next step would be to reroute. Step 2. Reroute. So yeah, here's a close-up on the head. And here's the hair. We're going to stab it in. I'm just going to use my reroute tool and start with the hairline. The reroute process can take a long time, but it can be really soothing. I really enjoy it and it's actually kind of one of my favorite parts of the whole process. We're just going to skip ahead because this can kind of take forever, so there's going to be some skips. Alright, here is the hairline. So yeah, the ombre looks really good, I'm really happy with it. And I'm just going to continue the rest off screen. And here's the fully rerouted head. I glued it off screen as well using liquid fusion and let it dry for about two days and then popped it on. Next, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm super excited. I'm going to be sculpting some horns. I'm going to be using some epoxy sculpt, and yeah, they're going to go right there. So yeah, let's do it. But before that, step three, face up prep. So for face up prep, I'm just going to pull the hair back with a twist tie and then wrap the hair and the body with some saran wrap. After that, I'm going to try really hard to be precise and tape the edge of the hairline because later on we're going to be coloring the whole head black. And I'm just getting all those arms really close to the body so that I can wrap the body. Okay, cool, this is looking good. Step four, sculpting. I'm going to start by marking my points for my horns. After that, I'm going to stab some holes in the head. I'm just heating up a piece of wire with a lighter and then stabbing it in. After that, I'm going to make some horn bases with some armature wire. I'm just going to loop it in, and then twist it off together, bend it to the right shape, and then cut it to length. Repeat the process for the other side. Cool, so here are the armature wires. Now we're going to be adding some epoxy sculpt. Wearing gloves, I'm going to mix equal parts of epoxy sculpt and start sculpting. I'm just going to start by getting a general shape and then just keep on refining. You can use water to help smooth things out and keep the epoxy sculpt from sticking to your fingers. I'm using a variety of tools to sculpt because, uh, yeah, I don't really have any experience with sculpting. So let's hope these turn out okay. 
I'm using this palette knife thingy I have, a Q-tip, and an awl. So yeah, be creative with your tools. Once I get one horn looking good, I'm going to move on to the other one. Now it's just a game of symmetry and texture. So I'm just going to keep on working on these until I'm happy. You can see my failed attempt at a tail in the background. Just ignore that because that's not going to end up in the final product. So I'm just going to continue adding some texture. Yep. Sculptin' and sculptin'. Taking my time, just keep on sculpting. After I'm done sculpting, I'm going to let these cure for 24 hours and then do two layers of Mr. Super Clear as a base. Step 5 Face Up. So, yeah, we're going to start the face up by coloring this whole thing black. I think we're going to have to do about two layers covering the whole head. Alright, that's the first layer, let's go ahead and do another layer. Okay, on the third layer I'm going to start adding some white to really highlight the areas. This is really important on darker skin tones as this allows you to draw in details later. I'm going to do the eyes, the cheekbones, the brow line, just kind of the T-zone in general, a little bit on the jawline, the chin, the tip of the nose, as well as the horn tips. We're going to try to do a nice little ombre for the horn. And I'm just using another brush to blend up the edges. So yeah, now we're adding some light pink to the lips as well as the cheeks. After the next layer of Mr. Super Clear, you can see how all the pastels really darkened. This always happens when you spray on a layer of Mr. Super Clear, so you just want to keep building up the layers until you're happy with the color. So now I'm just using my black watercolor pencil and doing the general eye shape. I'm also sketching the general iris shape. After that, I'm just going to go in with some more pastels. I'm going to do the lips as well as add more highlights to the eyes. Do a little bit on the nose bridge and more on the T-zone. Also hit up those cheekbones, you really want to make those pop. And again, touch up those horns. Of course, more blush. And I think for the iris, we're going to do a light blue. So I'm going to use my watercolor pencil and just start filling that in. Of course, it doesn't look very dark right now, so just keep on spraying Mr. Super Clear and building up your layers. So yeah, let's just keep building up the color with some pastels and some watercolor pencils. I love doing dolls with this dark of a skin tone. It's so much fun. They're so pretty. The real challenge is making sure you're happy with all the opacity of your colors. Just make sure to build up layers and keep building up that color. It can be really challenging with darker skin tones, but that's half the fun of it. 
So now I'm just adding some more white pastels around the eyes so I can add in detail later with black. So I'm just coloring in the square with a white watercolor pencil. She looks really cute. And just refining the details with a black watercolor pencil. Now I'm just sketching in the eyelids and refining that eye line. Just creating some definition with some darker blue pastels at the top of the iris. As well as adding some depth in the lips with some dark pink pastels. I'm also using the same pastel as eyeshadow. We're going for a very kawaii demon, so she's going to be really cute. So we're doing some pink eyeshadow, some heavy blush, and some pink lips. Sorry that I'm working off camera, sometimes I can lose track of where the camera is. So now I'm using some white watercolor pencil on the horns and blending it out with the Q-tip. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the nose highlight. Now I'm just adding some more definition to the lip with the red watercolor pencil. After that, I'm going to go into white watercolor pencil for the iris and add some shine. As well as some darker blue for the top and then some more white around the eye. So now I'm just going to add some white watercolor pencil to the lip and blend that out with a Q-tip. And yeah, I'm just going to keep on building up all those colors. So she's looking pretty good, I think we're almost done with the face up. Alright, let's start adding some more definition pretty much all over the face. Back in the lips, the eyes, and yeah, kind of just everywhere. And next, I'm going to sketch in the pupil. I'm going to start small in the center and get gradually larger. After that, I'm going to do my least favorite part and work on the eyelashes. This can be really difficult for me to keep them symmetrical, but yeah, just be patient and erase if you need to.
When I'm happy with where the face is at, I'm going to add some eye shine to the eyes with a white acrylic paint. I'm just going to do some really cute heart shapes. Oh my god, they're so cute! And now I'm just adding in some final details to the face up. Oh, I forgot to mention I also added some shine to the lip with the same white acrylic paint. Step 6, Finishing Touches. Alright, so let's go ahead and add some lashes to the doll. We're going to be using some Elmer's glue wall, some scissors, and some pins. First up, let's cut the lashes to length and then bend them to shape. So I'm just going to pick off the self-adhesive that comes with the lash and just shape it into the desired shape. After that, I'm going to put a thin layer of glue on the back and then just stick it on. I'm going to use a pin to refine the placement and just uh, keep messing with it until I'm happy. I'm also going to use the pin to wipe off any excess glue. Make sure that you're very careful when you're doing this because you don't want to mess up your face up after spending so much time working on it. Okay, so once the lashes are all dried and on there, it's time to add some gloss. We're going to add some gloss to the lips as well as to the eyes. They look a little blue and hazy like she's blind, but I swear it's going to dry clear later. Well, clear and shiny. Alright, so now I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. Step 7. Clothing. So I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with this doll when I started, so that's why I'm doing the clothing after the face up is done. So here she is, all fully done. And I think I'm going to do something really cute and kawaii for the dress. So we're doing this little ruffle number with some lace and some pink cotton, and I'm going to add some pink satin bows later on. I'm going to start by sewing up the side seams on the bodice and attaching the waistband to the skirt. Okay, next I'm going to fold this over and create a tunnel for the satin ribbon. After that, I'm going to hem the top of the bodice and the peplum. Okay, I sewed the back of the skirt off screen and pulled it tight. Here it is, it's super cute. Let's just try it on to fit and then tie a bow. Here it is, it looks super cute, I love it. Yeah, it's so cute. Okay, I did a lot off screen on the bodice. I sheared up the skirt and then attached it. I also added a little lace trim across the top just to add a little cute detail. I also added a snap closure in the back. Now I'm just going to sew a little bit at center back with enough clearance to pass over the hips. So let's try these two pieces together. 
they look really cute. Now I think we just need some bow details. I'm also going to tack down center front just so it lies a little flatter. Yeah, that's looking a lot better now. Next, I'm going to add a halter detail with a bow at center front. Oh my god, it's so cute, it's all done. Okay, let's go dress her. Step 8. Doll photo shoot. Feel the fantasy. So here's the final result. I'm so happy, she looks so good. This is the first time I've ever dyed a head and changed the skin tone like that, and also the first time I've ever sculpted. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks really good. I'm kind of surprised how good the horns turned out, but yeah, they look adorable. She looks so cute, guys. Look at those little hearts in her eyes. Oh my god, so cute. I think the outfit is just the right touch, and yeah, she's kind of perfect. I think she's definitely my new favorite doll. So I actually kind of had a really hard time naming her. I decided to go with Lily after Lilith, the first woman, and the mother of all demons. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I hope it helped. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects. We'll definitely be doing some more doll stuff in the future, as well as some other DIYs, so keep up to date. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!